what is the biophysics of the read and write communication that we're talking about here as we now step into the efforts at Neuralink? Yeah, so uh, brain is made up of these specialized cells called neurons. There's billions of them, you know, tens of billions, you know, sometimes people call it a hundred billion that are connected in this complex yet dynamic network uh, that are constantly remodeling. You know, they're changing their synaptic weights um, and that's, you know, what we typically call neuroplasticity. And the neurons are also bathed in this charged environment that is uh, laden with many charged molecules like potassium ions, sodium ions, chlorine ions. And uh, those actually facilitate these, um, you know, through ionic current communication between these different networks. And uh, when you look at the look at a neuron as well, um, they they have these uh, membrane with a beautiful beautiful uh, protein structure called a voltage selective ion channels, which, in my opinion, is one of nature's best inventions. In many ways, if you think about what they are, they're doing the job of a modern day transistors. Transistors are nothing more at the end of the day than a voltage gated conduction channel. Um, and nature found a way to have that very, very early on in its evolution. And as we all know, with the transistor, you can have many, many computation and a, a lot of amazing things um, that that we have access to today. So I, I, I think I, it's one of those just as a tangent, just a beautiful, beautiful uh, invention that the nature came up with, these voltage gated ion channels. I mean, I, I suppose there's, uh, on the biological level, at every level of the complexity of the hierarchy of the of the organism, there's going to be some mechanisms for storing information and for doing computation. And this is just one such way. But to do that with uh, biological and chemical components is interesting. Plus like with neurons, I mean, it's not just electricity, it's uh, chemical communication, it's also mechanical. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are like actual objects that have like, that vibrate, I mean, they move. Yeah, they're, they're actually, I mean, there's a lot of really, really interesting physics that 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 are involved in, you know, kind of going back to my um, work on ultrasound uh, during grad school, there, there are groups and uh, there were groups and there are still groups um, looking at ways to cause neurons to actually fire an action potential using ultrasound wave. And the mechanism to which that's happening is still unclear as I understand. Um, you know, it may just be that, you know, you're imparting some sort of thermal energy and that causes cells to depolarize in some interesting ways. Um, but there are also these um, ion channels or even membranes that actually just open up its pore as they're being mechanically sh like shook, mm -hmm. right? Vibrated. So there's just a lot of, you know, elements of these like move particles, um, which again, like that's governed by diffusion physics, right? Uh, movements of particles. And there's also a lot of kind of interesting physics there. Also not to mention, as Roger Penrose talks about the, there might be some uh, beautiful weirdness in the quantum mechanical effects oh, of all yeah. of this. And he, he actually believes that consciousness might emerge from the quantum mechanical effects there. So like there's physics, there's chemistry, there's biology, all of that is going on there. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, you can. Yes, I, there's there's a lot of levels of physics that you can dive into.